What's up guys? Today I'm working on a 1996 Audi convertible and a lot of you have asked me how do I clean convertible tops and the plastic window back there? It's not as complicated as you might think. That and a lot more coming up on this episode of Ride Along. All right, so I want to give you a little background on this car. This is actually a really good friend of mine. It's his soon-to-be sons. It's a secret. He doesn't know about it yet. He's 16, 17. He just got his license. His parents bought him his first new car. We all remember our first new car. So I'm really excited. Um, like I always tell you, I like these little projects or something cool. So he's gonna, we're going to surprise him or they're going to surprise him. But I have a lot of polishing to do. The interior has got some mold and things. So I'm going to clean it up. But great example for a convertible top. Also, uh, just a little disclaimer, I'm outside, it's windy, the trains are going, the birds are going, so I apologize in advance. So, step one, what do you do? When you look or you think about convertible tops, you always want to do the same sort of mentality as you would on paint. Touch it the least amount as you possibly can. A lot of times on new cars, you know, there's some hydrophobic products that are in there. You don't want to rub them off. Just, just leave them the way they are and, and the water will drip off. So don't over touch it. Again, if it's dirty, then you need to touch it. But keep that in the back of your mind. Number two is you need to decipher between whether it is cloth or it's vinyl. The old school vinyl you see on you know, old muscle cars and things like that. I don't, I don't think we really have them anymore in modern time. You know, you know, th this day and age. But if you have vinyl, I'll do that real quick. You basically clean it with ammo, lather, or whatever interior uh, plastic leather and vinyl cleaner that is good. You know, that you use. But I would use ammo lather. I take a microfiber towel, wipe it down. If it needs a little bit more, I'll use the interior brush or something. Boom, you're, you're good to go. So that that's the five second version of how to clean that. Today, obviously, we're working with cloth. Uh, so this type of cloth material. Um, it still is porous. It's sort of like your clothing, so to speak. Again, it's much stronger than that. But uh, for this example, see all this dirt that's here? I wouldn't want to go just rubbing that, you know, just constant, constantly wiping it. It's the same idea as that video that I shot a while back in interior, how to clean uh, leather interior or something like that. I think it's got a lot of views. Um, but there's little bits of dirt and, and uh, abrasive, let's call it, in the edges. And I, and I open it up and I vacuum it out or I use a little brush. Same idea here dirt gets trapped in here and if you keep rubbing it you're going to cause sandpaper like uh, issues with this and uh, this is not super cheap to fix as a lot of you guys know i mean this, this these things can pull up it's a pain in the butt so um, step one don't touch it if you don't need to step two identify uh, and now we're going to go through the rest of the steps and uh, get this thing looking good after identifying the material step number two is to heavily rinse the cloth top with water if you decide to use a power washer be sure to keep the nozzle head a safe distance away from the material. This removes about 80% of the trapped contaminants before step number three. Next, apply Ammo Shag Fabric Cleaner to one small section at a time. Immediately agitate the cleaning solution with the Ammo Interior Brush. Move the brush in straight lines, horizontal and or vertical. Tamp the brush bristles along the crease, edge or stitching to help release the embedded dirt. Step four is to rinse the area to flush out the newly released or suspended dirt before it dries in place again. Repeat the same process in small areas and work your way around the car. A thorough cleaning should take about 15 to 20 minutes at most. Okay, so I'm doing little areas at a time, as you can see, maybe, I don't know, six, seven inches, uh, because this is pretty bad. It's not a normal uh, dirty, uh, top, it's, it's abnormally dirty, let's put it that way. So you can see there's a little bit of mold here. So what I'm normally doing is back over there, I learned a little bit, I, I like to take my brush and get into the seams. You know, there's stitches here, I like to get in there. And normally that um, does a good enough job. But for this really bad section over here, what I'm gonna do, I spray a little bit. Now I need you to be careful with this part. Right on the seam, I want you to uh, take a stiff bristle brush, okay, and you're gonna make sure you don't hit this plastic piece, meaning the, the, the glass or the you know vinyl here, and you're gonna rub just a tiny bit. Now look at that. 
You see the coloration that just came out there because it's super stiff? I don't like to do this, so you're not gonna wanna do this every single time, but this is an extreme example of really, really bad mold. So I'm just gonna lightly go in there. Also notice with my brush, I'm not going in circles, nor am I doing it on this one too. Sometimes the fibers can get a little funky, especially if it's an older uh, top. So I'm just gonna do straight lines. I mean, that is, that is super gross right there. So occasionally it's okay to use this. I even have a skinnier one, I can't find it. Just a little tiny one that I keep, um, just so you don't wanna you know, artificially scratch this uh, vinyl, you know, the, the window either. So use it sparingly. I'm not telling you to use it. Uh, there are some other ones out there that are uh, the softer material, meaning the same as my brush, but they're in the brush form. My little brush, but they're, they're wider. You can use those too, those, those are pretty good. But occasionally you want some stiff stuff, just like this. Whew. That's, that is gross. Okay, so now we clean the entire canvas or the fabric, and now the next step, of course, is to dry it. There's lots of steps to drying it, um, and we'll talk about them, and some of them are good and some of them are, are uh, bad. Right off the bat, uh, a lot of people use a terry towel, and that is the number one thing you don't wanna do, and the reason why is it will leave little lint balls, which is gonna cause you a lot more issue. You know, you're gonna have to take a lint roller afterwards or use uh, some compressed air or something Stay away from terry towels. Now, sometimes you can use a microfiber towel. I don't recommend using a new one. Sometimes they have a little bit of, uh, you know, the little fibers coming off. If, you have, if this is the only thing you have, you can put it on the, on the material and, and blot, and that'll help. What's gonna sound really weird is I'm actually gonna recommend, you know those things I never recommend for cleaning the paint, which is the chamois, you know, the ones that have come in the tube? You can use that on this and that, those would be pretty good because there's no residue that comes off. And remember, chamois is only gonna soak up water, that's all you really need. It's not going to pick up any dirt or anything. So if you have one lying around and it's relatively clean, you can use that. What I like to use is uh, air. Now we have two things, we have compressed air and we have uh, the master blaster, right? And I'll show you what that is. Uh, two very good tools, but for two different uses. So a lot of guys, oh, I have compressed air. Now, if you were to use compressed air, it's, uh, it's pointy, there's a tip here. So I like to use it on the actual threads. And it'll get in, in those little tight areas. It's because it's, it, you're, you're talking about, a, this is a sniper rifle and this is a bazooka, you know what I mean? So this is very, very uh, exact. But if I use it on this area here, it's gonna make little lines. So if I were to do that all the way around, eventually when it dries, you'll see these little, very faint, uh, but uh, lines and it's, it's not good. So I, I use this just for the edges. So that's number one. Then I'll use this. This has got a nice wide stream and you can have heat in it and it'll blow off all the, uh, all the uh, extra water. And of course you can let it dry outside a little bit too, but I like to do this. So let me turn this on. Now it's pretty powerful. So spend a few minutes. I spent probably f between 15 and 20 minutes doing uh, the cleaning this out. It looks way, way better. You see all the green gunk that came off. Then I'll spend another uh, maybe five or six minutes doing this. Now again, are you gonna do this every single time you wash the car? No, of course not. Uh, but when it's this bad, uh, those are the steps. So you can skip a little bit here and there. Like if you just get it a little bit wet, you can just dry it off or, you know, you can think about the condition of your particular vehicle and, and how to clean it. But again, this is the worst case scenario. So pick and choose what works for you. Now we're gonna talk about the last step about uh, cloth here and then we'll hop in to the window. Okay, now that everything is dry and it's looking really, really good, I'm, I'm pretty excited about how this came out. Uh, you have the option to put some hydrophobic uh, materials on here, or some spray or liquid on here. It's very common. There's tons of products out there. Uh, just Google search around, you can find it. Right now I'm using uh, Scotchgard. Um, but again, anything that uh, is hydrophobic, what does that mean? Doesn't like water. So we're gonna spray this on here. And uh, real quick, if you see some lint, don't be, a, don't be scared, you can use a lint roller as well and get a bunch of that off if for some reason you use a terry towel or what have you. Any, any, you don't want any lint on here now, so this is the time to do it. Step one, make sure this is very, very dry. Shake this up, just give a very light coat. Ideally not doing it in the wind like this. <laughs> That's it, you wanna do uh, a couple of light coats. You don't wanna do heavy, never, just like painting a car, you never wanna do heavy coats. You do lots of little light uh, light coats. That's how they do uh, uh, you know, show cars and things, by the way. So anyways, yeah, you do this, let it dry for a little bit. 
I'll come back and do another coat and uh, it should be uh, much more hydrophobic because as you saw before, it just is, it's really bad. So it just soaked in and uh, you can do this probably every, uh, you know, twice a year or something along those lines to protect it based on how much you drive it. Is it stored inside, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, that's how you clean uh, a very, very dirty um, cloth top. Now let's talk about polyvinyl fog and what you need to do to remove that. All right, before we get started on the very complicated process to clean this, I'm kidding, of course, uh, let's talk a little bit about polyvinyl fog. Why does it happen? Well, this material, it's obviously not glass, so it's, look, I can push it, it's bendable. Why is it bendable? Well, it's convertible and it needs to fold and it go down uh, underneath the little trap here. So what does that mean? When a product like this, vinyl, uh, is super spongy, porous, let's call it, it just soaks up everything, including uh, contaminants and gunk and all kinds of junk that sticks in it that maybe wouldn't necessarily stick into paint. Uh, also, UV light, because it's transparent, it goes through, the light, the UV uh, uh, you know, rays is just eating this thing up and hence turning it yellow. So, let's talk about steps now. Step one is I just do a very basic, I mean, it's pretty dirty, as you can see in my hand. I just do a very basic uh, wipe down, uh, you know, as if it was a glass, you're just gonna clean it. So uh, if you don't clean it and then you go to step two, you're gonna end up using the gunk that's in here, this extra stuff. You're gonna end up using that as an abrasive and you don't want that, you wanna use the real abrasive in it, so you're just gonna scratch it up. So again, step one, clean the window. Step two, we'll talk about right now. So as you can see after step one, the glass is pretty dirty. A lot of people are gonna probably leave a comment and say you should have used Plexus. You can absolutely use Plexus. I don't have it right now, so uh, Invisible Glass certainly did the job, but uh, if you have Plexus, you can use that as well. So uh, as you can tell from here, just right off the bat, cleaning it has already done a, a you know, significant difference. Next, you want to take something that's designed for it, uh, and this is uh, Plastex from Meguiar's. So you're going to take a little bit on a cloth, like this, and you're just going to rub it in. And I like still like to use straight lines because if you really kind of get an area that's two straight lines, meaning back and forth, up and down, as opposed to circles, um, if you get an area that's really bad and you end up you know, scratching it yourself, it's clear. So you're gonna see the circle, which would drive me crazy. So maybe some people say to do little tiny, tiny circles. Okay, you know, I can't really argue with that. I just, this is just what I do, so you know, teach his own. Nonetheless, I'm gonna keep doing this uh, a few different times. I'll stop here so we can do a before and after. Now, now look at that. That was just barely wiping while I'm yapping away. Look at that. So um, I gotta do the inside of the glass too. Let me go and finish, but there's, you know, there's really not much more than that. Just keep doing it nice and smooth. You don't want to put too much downward pressure, uh, but feel it out. And it's getting significantly better. Is it going to be perfectly clear? I don't know, but we'll, we'll find out. It, it's going to be, uh, I think it's just going to be about 80% better, which, uh, you know, now you can actually see in the car, right? See out of the car, which is super helpful. As always, if you have any questions, shoot me an email at larry at ammonyc.com. Thanks for watching. I actually have a lot more work to do. I got to polish this thing out and I'm uh, pretty excited for his uh, surprise. It's, a, it's always a big moment in, in, a, in a guy's life when he gets his first car. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.